good morning good morning good afternoon and good evening i hope that you're good where you are and i hope that the blessings of the lord are upon your life you know i could have been a good if i went into the music industry just imagine they say here comes ashley and that they come to the stage i'm like i hope that you're good where you are i hope that the blessings of the lord are upon your life where you are just imagine guys just imagine you know i'll be rhyming i'll be flowing but anyway <laughs> this is where we are today and i love what i do so i hope you also be blessed as you listen to our message for today now today guys we're going to also go to esther chapter one and we are going to get our message from esther chapter one where we are going to look at a kingdom aspect right now we are going to look at the kingdom aspect yes that's what we're going to be talking about in esther chapter one now when you go to esther chapter one we realize that there's king and then there's a kingdom and then there's a law i want you to get those three sequences right i want you to get and oh there's four actually there's a king there's a kingdom there's a law and then there's the citizens right now the first part the king the king was king Aceras, right? And the king cannot rule with his no kingdom, right? So the king Aceras was part, was a ruler over the kingdom. And the king cannot be there unless he has a queen. So the queen was Queen Vashti, right? And the third, the third thing, I said there's a law, yes. The third thing I said there's a law. So for every kingdom, there is a law. Right. For every kingdom, there is a law. There's no kingdom which operates without a law. That's just how it is. There's no kingdom which operates without a law. Fourth one, there is the citizens. Ooh, I need to change my hand. The fourth one is there is citizens. Right? A kingdom cannot be a kingdom without people that reside in the kingdom you get it right so we have to have citizens of the kingdom and also a kingdom cannot be a kingdom without laws that define it from other kingdoms right and also a kingdom cannot be there unless there's a king right and we now we establish those four things now when you come to esther chapter one when there was now an issue or let me just explain it this way there was a king azeris made a feast and in his feast he invited all the people that were part of the kingdom, the citizens. So, the citizens, by being citizens of this kingdom that King Azeros was part of, they benefited from the feast that the king was holding. Why? Not because of anything else, but because they were part of the kingdom and they were citizens of the kingdom. So, by virtue, if you're a citizen of the kingdom, you get to benefit from the kingdom. It is your right to benefit from the kingdom. Why? Because you are a citizen and the kingdom should provide for its citizens. And also, so now, when the king held a feast and he called upon his citizens, small and great, the Bible records. It says that he held a feast, he got drunk. Now, guys, I'm just going to paraphrase this, right, for our message for today. I'm just going to paraphrase it. He, he held a feast, stage one. He held a feast, stage two, invited people, the citizens, stage three. He ate, he got drunk, and after he got drunk, he decided to, you know what, I'm going to call upon the queen. And when he called upon the queen, the queen refused. And stage four, the king then calls upon the nobles and starts to say, you know what, what can we do to deal with the situation? Now that the queen has refused to come, to come, upon my commandment therefore they say what shall we do according to the law therefore it shows that for the kingdom they cannot punish someone unless they refer to the law they cannot just do something haphazardly unless they refer to the law so now the king refers to the law and then they say you know what let us add a law to the law that is already there and this law shall not be outed and they start to say, you know what, if any woman shall dishonor her husband and all of those things, then she shall also be dishonored and she shall not be allowed to come back to her home. Right? 
I want you to get that flow, guys. Go and read Esther chapter 1 and then come back and watch this episode, right? Go and read Esther chapter 1 and come back and to this to this episode of today. So after all these things, there is a kingdom. But this kingdom that King Azarias is part of, the laws can be changed at any given time to suit the king. So this kingdom already we are seeing faults in it, right? We're already seeing faults because laws can be changed at any given time just so that it can suit those that are in power, right? And today I want to bring to you today that you are part of a kingdom. Your country is a kingdom. Whether you're in America, whether you are, you're in Ghana, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Zambia, wherever you are, you are part of a kingdom. Your country is a kingdom. That's just the point I want you to keep in mind, guys. Your country is a kingdom. Do you understand? Your country is a kingdom. It's not just a country. If it was a country, we said it in the other episode, that if it was just a country, we're all going to have the same laws. But the reason why we all have different laws is because these are different kingdoms, right? These are all different kingdoms. This is what the Bible says. It says that, yes, not that's what the Bible says, but this is how it is. If they were all part of one kingdom, we're all going to have the same laws and we're all going to have the same rules. But because they're all different, we all have different laws and different rules, right? So every, every time you go on about your life, now I want you to think in your mind that, okay, so my country is a kingdom. The Bible then says, the reason why I'm referring to Esther chapter one is because I want to bring you, I want to introduce you to a kingdom that the king does not change, right? The king does not die. But it is open for anyone to become a citizen and for you to benefit as well from being part of the citizen, right? And also, the law does not change. The king does not change the law so that he can just suit his own interest and his own heart desires. Nothing changes in this kingdom that I want to introduce you to, right? And this is found in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, where the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The Bible does not say, Seek ye first a church. Seek ye first a religion. These days, people, we are hoping from church to church. Why? Because we are seeking for the right church and we're seeking for the right religion to follow. But this is not what the Bible instructs us to do. The Bible says the first thing that you should be seeking for is the kingdom of God. You're not seeking for a church. You're not seeking for a religion. You're not seeking for anything of those superficial things, right? The Bible is saying you should seek the kingdom of God. And the Bible had to be specific and say the kingdom of God because there is another kingdom, right? There is another kingdom as well that is not of God, right? So today, guys, the message I want to leave with you today is our, I'm, I'm introducing you to a kingdom that the king does not die. The king does not change laws. In your own country today, if they decide tomorrow that we want to change the law, they are going to change the law and you have no say over it. It is just going to change and it is going to affect you either way, right? And whether it's affecting you in a good way or in a bad way, that is none of their concern as long as it serves their interests, right? So today I want to bring to you a kingdom that doesn't change laws. And this is the kingdom of God, guys. Seek that kingdom first. Remember what I said, guys, your country is a kingdom. Your country is a kingdom. And the Bible says we should seek the kingdom of God and not seek religion, not seek 
churches and all these other funny things guys that we are doing no seek first the kingdom of god a kingdom that doesn't change a king a kingdom that doesn't change laws to suit the king and his best interest a kingdom where god says i am the lord your god the only one who does not change god the same yesterday today and tomorrow his word does not change guys so therefore you can be guaranteed that when you are part of the kingdom if he says if you seek me first all these other things will be added unto you you can be assured that this will certainly happen because he does not change tomorrow is not going to be say ah you know what hey yeah no that time i was joking i was joking ah no i just wanted you to seek me you know i just wanted you to seek me um yeah but uh, now the law has changed all these other things are not going to be added unto you no that's not going to happen but the bible even is clear if you seek god first all these other things shall be added unto you right guys that's just a, a, a message i wanted to bring to you today i'm introducing you to a kingdom a kingdom not these earthly kingdoms that you are part of but a kingdom of god and not any other kingdom seek that kingdom first seek that kingdom first seek the kingdom of god first and all these other things will be added unto you